Okay. Okay, everybody. So just take a couple of breaths and allow yourself to arrive in this moment. To allow yourself to reach out with your senses to the energies of the dawn that has broken or is breaking on this winter solstice day. Lord Tennyson wrote, Ring out wild bells to the wild sky, the flying cloud, the frosty light, the year is dying in the night. Ring out wild bells and let him die. Ring out the old, ring in the new, ring happy bells across the snow, the year is going, let him go. Ring out the false, ring in the true. That is what we are doing today in this ritual. To welcome the divine son, the divine child, to embrace that inner infant. At the time of the winter solstice, when the sun is born anew, and readying for its own journey into increased strength, vitality, potency, and impact. This is the opportunity for you to connect to that part of yourself that holds innocence and optimism. No matter what we have experienced in our lives, how we came into the world, carries a strong dose of openness and trust. Even if there were some past life trails in utero experiences or birth trauma, our little spirits held the energy of hope. And so this ritual is to reconnect to that, reconnect to that energy of hope, reconnect to that inner infant. In alchemy, in alchemical terms, this inner infant is the prima materia. It is that which precipitates the entire process of crafting the Philosopher's Stone. It is the Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end. And so it is so important to connect to the energies of that, who we were when we first came into the world, the essence that brought us into this life, because that is still with us. It is still there. And in this ritual, through the symbolic enactment of this first alchemical stage of calcination, in which matter is reduced to ash, to burn off all that which is not essential, this ritual serves to remind you of the beautiful essence that lies within the celebration of the wonder child that was and that is you. And so holding that intention for this time that we are sharing together, this time that you are holding sacred space with yourself, I invite you to close your eyes and focus on your breath. And with the first, or each of four first breaths, bring your awareness fully to each of the four directions that surround you and the elements that are aligned with them. Breathe into north and the element of earth. Breathe into east and the element of air. Breathe 
breathe into south and the element of fire. And if you have a tea light in front of you at this point, light the tea light. Breathe into west the element of water. And feel these four elements that surround you. And with the next two breaths, bring your awareness fully into the below and the above. Breathe into the below and feel the unwavering foundation of the earthbound material plane. Take a moment to be aware of and honor all those who have come before, who have also walked on this material plane, this place, this land. Ancestors and First Peoples. Breathe into the above and expand into the limitless breath of the cosmic plane. And feel the expanse of all that that ever was. The eons that reach back past the first peoples. Back to the truly elemental. And with your next breath, find the place in the center in which all of these directions, including above and below, come together. Breathe into this center the element of ether or spirit. If you have deity statues on your altar, take a moment to acknowledge their divine presence in this space. Even without statues, welcome the divine that you work with. And take several more deep breaths. Know that you yourself are also at the center of this sacred space. You too hold this space, the very hub of the universe. You are the meeting place of spirit above and matter below and the magic that surrounds. Begin to focus on that sense of the you that is traveling through this material plane. Having a human experience. If you have a picture of yourself as a child on the altar, bring your attention to that child. Look into the eyes of that child, allowing a sense of the essence of your child self to touch you.
find the place within that responds to that wonder, knowing how precious and sacred it is. And allow yourself to drop deep within as you look at that child face each time you drop in connect to some energetic sludge a negative message that has somehow held the potential to dim the essence of that beautifully innocent child that you see before you. And each time you grasp hold of a message, write it down on one of the pieces of paper that lies in front of you on the altar, and then place it in front of the unlit candle in front of you. And you may find that there is just one message or two you may find that there are many that come up. It may feel like the negative messages will never stop. But do not worry. Allow the dive, the retrieval, and noting on the paper until there are no more messages that come up or until it feels like that is enough for this ritual. Just take some time.
If that flow has stopped for you, just take a moment to contemplate what you have written down. I'm just going to leave it for a couple more minutes in case there are others who are still writing out the negative messages. But just take some time to consider what lies in front of you, what lies between you and that image of that beautiful child, that divine essence. Just take a moment to contemplate all the glorious potential and light that is waiting to be activated. But there is this pile of negativity that needs to be addressed first. And now, shift your attention to the tea light. And if that is in a cauldron, shift your attention to the cauldron that holds the tea light. This flame that burns. And within it burns the means of your release from the burden of negative messaging, the burden that you have been carrying, perhaps carrying for years, certainly carrying for far too long. And so in your time, pick up a piece of paper that holds a message, read the message, let it land, be aware of how it has held you back, how is it, it has held you back from connecting with your truth, with your essence, with your light, with the light of that child. And with a breath commit to letting it go, releasing it to the flame. releasing it into the water. And one by one, let all these messages go. And as you do, 
release the heavy sting of each message. And as you release the sting of the message, allow a lightness to come into your cells. When all the messages have turned to ash, when all the messages have disintegrated, find the divine child that resides within. And when you feel that part of you, when you know the pulse of your essence, when you look at the picture of that child and you feel the resonance, that child within, light the candle before you and let that flame shine like a strong beacon in the dark. You are
Take time to become clear on who you are and what is precious about you. So take that in. I hope you were able to hear the words of that song. You are the heart. You are the hands. You are the voice of spirit on earth. And who you are and what you do is a blessing to the world. Those are the only true words. That is the only true message. Anything that interferes with that knowing 
needs to be burned to ash. So take a breath. And be deeply aware of that essence within that child infant self who came into this life with hope and optimism. So much that was going to be experienced and explored and shared is that essence. That infant is still there still there. And we know this next little poem snippet that I'm going to share. We know it well. But it's always beneficial to take it in again. From Marion Williamson who said our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people do not feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of the divine that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As we are liberated, from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So let that land for you. Let that light glow within you. And feel once more within yourselves the igniting of the light that is you. And in this place, I'm going to reflect from the runes. I'm going to pick six of them. So this is the moment when you take a moment and pick a number between one and six. And the first, I'm gonna to try to hold it up as well, is perfect, number one. is Dagaz, the dawn, <laughs> a new day, new beginnings, solstice sun, so to speak. And it is the butterfly. That is number one for all you number ones out there. Number two, Number two is Isa. 
ice. Stillness, stand still, which sometimes can be um, interpreted as a challenge, like being stopped, an obstacle. But it is also, I love this image of the bat. It, it is wrapping yourself in the stillness, which often allows us to come to that place of quietness, like a still winter morn, right? And come to a place of the clarity in that stillness. So number three. Othala. Odal. Odalas. This is home. It's a hermit crab with crystals on his back. <laughs> And Odal is, it's, it's our ancestral home. It's not just the home in which we live. It's, it's the home in our bones, the home in our cells. It is that, that inheritance that can never be taken away from us. It's like the home on our back, right? <laughs> home is where the heart is. Always knowing our place because we know our place within ourselves. And number four. It's the uh, advertising card. So uh, another card number four. <laughs> Unless that's a message to know how to put yourself out there in the world. Um, La Goose, the seahorse. So interesting. I'm, I think I'm going to take a picture of these and post them because there's almost like a little story that's happening here. La Goose balances Isa, right? Isa is the water that is frozen and not frozen like, um, it doesn't have to be stuck. It's that, that still water. Whereas Laguz is the water that flows. It's the emotions and the unconscious and all of that which moves through us and guides us. We need to know, like seahorse, we need to know when to flow with it and when to wrap our tail around a piece of seaweed <laughs> and just allow things to go by us. Um, but it is about movement. And it is about flowing. So number five. Is Tiwaz. Tear. Eagle. It is. Um, Tear is the god Tear. And you can see in that eagle and the sword, this, this, um, this, a sovereignty, um, energy, uh, there's a protection that comes with tear as well. That, uh, strong divine, um, protection that is also informed by a sense of time and timelessness. Like the wisdom that comes from knowing when to stand up for oneself and knowing when, you know, this too shall pass. Tear is like this umbrella that protects us. And number six. Oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. Wunjo. Wunjo. Wunjo is joy. It's the hummingbird. The hummingbird in um, Mayan tradition is is little little warrior. It's the culmination of, of the whole journey, and there's something of great magic with um, with uh, hummingbird as well. But Wunjo is joy. It Wunjo um, stands for weather vane or flag, 
and it is not joy that's based on external circumstances it is the joy that comes from knowing that when we're able to sort of calibrate ourselves to the external we're not changing ourselves in order to accommodate the external but we're sort of shifting ourselves to be able to like seahorse to meet it that's where our joy comes from joy is not in the externals it's in knowing that we are always okay because we know how to meet the externals that's what joy is so take a moment take that in take your rune and the animal or if you want, take all the runes and all the animals. <laughs> there is no limitation here. No limitation. And just take a moment to breathe. Be aware of your heart. And that gentle light of hope that shines there. And we're going to just bring our awareness back to our breath. when you're ready, sort of anchoring that connection with essence, using either your breath or a candle snuffer if you have one, release the flame in front of you. It's not putting out the flame, it's releasing that light out into the cosmos, that your light will shine forth. what has been experienced in ritual lives forever in your cells the power of ritual comes from the power of transformation of stepping into sacred space allowing transformation to happen and then carrying that transformation with us when we leave that space what you have felt in this ritual it lives within you and it need only be called forth from within whenever you choose so take some time to move through the directions once more thanking the elements for helping to hold space and keep you safe. Start again in the north with earth. And move through the east with air. And south with fire. west with water and again connect with the below thanking the earth for supporting and nourishing you the above the cosmic plane for inspiring you expanding you thank and bid farewell to the deities who have been a part of this ritual with you who may always walk with you and know 
that the wheel may turn around you, but you are as they are ever at the center. And so the shortest day came and the year died and everywhere down the centuries of snow white world came people singing, dancing to drive the dark away. They lighted candles in the winter trees they hung their homes with evergreen. They burned beseeching fires all night long to keep the year alive. And when the new year's sunshine blazed awake, they shouted, reveling. Through all the frosty ages, you can hear them echoing behind us. Listen. All the long echoes sing the same delight this shortest day. As promise wakens in the sleeping land, they carol, feast, give thanks, and dearly love their friends, and hope for peace. And so do we, here, now, this year, and every year, Welcome, Yule. I'm stopping. <laughs>